Okay, so I've got this assigned to all start, you know, stop, start, stop, start. And then I got this one over here to all clear. Boom, it clears everything fine. But I, I want to do a MIDI assign to all clear because all clear, it can only be assigned to a controller. And a controller, if you have it on your board, and it can only be assigned to press. So you can accidentally press all clear. That's always been the problem with the uh, RC300 is that no matter how you set it up, you'd have to figure out a way to clear it with, with, a, with a press. This one, you can do, I can assign this to be a long press to send a MIDI signal. So I want to do long press, MIDI signal in, and then make one of the, make one of the um, assigns. I want to go assign, you know, to on source is MIDI, you know, MIDI, whatever, tw MIDI 20, like this. And then moments, right? And then I want it to be target. Target should be all clear. There's no all clear target. Why is there no all clear target? That's That needs to be put in. So just to be clear, the as of right now, you can only assign controllers. You can assign any of these buttons or any of these buttons, these buttons. You can even assign an expression pedal, I think, to, to trigger an all clear assign. But if you have an external MIDI controller, it cannot be assigned to all clear. That's a huge uh, glaring omission. Because with, an ex with something like the MC8 Morningstar, you can do, you can make it so you have to do double click hold and then you hold it down and then it'll send a, a CC message that should, that should be allowed to all clear everything. That's to prevent accidental all clears. Because all clear in the middle of a performance is a disaster. The RC300, every once in a blue moon, I would accidentally um, all clear everything. Because you, to, with the RC300, you have to use, um, I would use the memory increase, increase, decrease. I guess I could still do that with this, but it, it's, it's, it should be easy. It should just be all clear. You know, hold this down. Boom, CC message, assign to, all clear. Boom, done. But this target, you go through all the targets. There's a gazillion of them, basically wearing out this. Um, like, look at. Also, to go through them all, look how long it takes. It's crazy. You're gonna wear out that uh, that attenuator knob. But hopefully, you don't have to set it up too often. But look at this. I mean, I'm so happy that there's tons of things. But in a, in in about ten seconds of setting this thing up, I realized two major ones that are missing right away, which is crazy. All clear is missing in here, and you can't turn the input effects a effect level up and down with an ex with a controller. I mean, there's I'm sure there's tons of other things, but every single thing that I've looked for, you can it's, it's you know, you're, I'm finding little tiny things that are missing, which is a little scary. But firmware updates are I'm assuming are pretty easy for these kind of things. So hopefully they can add an all clear into the assigns. I don't know why that's not in there as of right now. And I hope that these attenuators are easier to replace. Another very important thing is these three buttons up here are, are the most valuable that, for assigns because they have the lights, okay? So this is important. This is the thing that I discovered. I don't know what I'm going to do with these three yet. I, like, I, I, I had them as undos for a while because on my other board I have... Three, a three undo buttons for the three tracks. Track one, two, three, track one undo, track two, track three undo. And it gives you a little cue. It gives you a little green light when there's something in there. And then when you undo it, it turns red. So that's very valuable. This zone is extremely valuable. So, to, so you have to pick wisely what these three, um, what, those, what those three controllers are going to do. So you don't want to waste them because they have the, the light, the visual cues, and they have the very, exp the very expensive, nice knobs that should last forever, I hope. Um, and then you can use the control, external controllers all over the other place and MIDI stuff for other things, but it's very important to use these for the most important things. You wanna get the most bang for your buck because they have visual cues with the lights. That's another important thing I figured out. Using the lock is very important. So you can lock these controllers, knob locked unlocked that's very important so as of right now i have i have these set to my three track levels you know and i usually keep them around 85 or somewhere around there not 100 just I, I haven't you know i'm just setting it up now just figuring out how i want it to be 
And then maybe display mode, you know, I don't know, but I think I'm just gonna leave it as, what was it, track status? Yeah, uh, loop stat, loop track, yeah, loop tracks is the way you want it. Yeah, loop tracks. Loop tracks is the only thing that matters because, it's, because you get the pie chart. Here's what I mean about the light cues for, for this, this row up here, because this is an easy row to hit with your feet. So say you have a couple things, let's put, let's put a couple tracks in, you know, just, just put the lights in and you're gonna get cues up top. See, now I've got, see, so this is gonna go boom, you all the stop, start, but you got these cues up here. I believe I have this set as mark back so that, oh yeah, that's mark set. There's mark back. Um, that's mark record. But you get but you get the idea is that you can this is undo track one i believe yes it is and you can see how it it deletes it right so then you go recording track one overdubbing overdubbing so now i've got now i've got this is undo boom now now you know it's it's undid in red redone in green undid in red so looking down at the board you get these visual cues so forget about these words track select undo redo all start stop fx hold half speed reverse that's the way it ships, and I mean, you can use it that way. That's the way the boss thinks that people want to use it. But for live performance, obviously, it's not the best way to do it. Um, you'll, you'll want to have quicker access to things. But so you have to be very clear on what you want to do up here. Up, the, up here is very important because you get the three lights. And look at you get all these visual cues. You know, it, it, OK, that's the mark set. There's the mark back. This is and I hold it down. It goes to record back undo track one you get it in red redo track one so i can see that through the visual like that that's green that's blue that's blue you know when you hit this it, it flashes that means it's setting the mark so you're getting those visual cues while you're playing it's very important it's like stop boom everything turns that you know i can set this then i can set this as a controller clear all see boom it clears all but you're getting all these visual cues everything's all about the visual you get this you also want to use this is important um, setup. The orb indicator you want it as tempo, and the loop indicator you want as loop. You can set it to beat or rhythm, and or you can have the whole thing just flash as tempo. But loop is where it's at because you get the pie chart, the pie going around. Like the pie is what it's all about. See, there's the pie. That's what you want with the center blinking. I mean, you can make the center so that it's um, it just tells you what the status of the loop is. Like it's overdubbing, it's playing. You know, it's recording, that kind of stuff. That's fine, but what you want is you want it to be, yeah, you want the orbit indicator to be loop, no, tempo. Yeah, you want the orbit indicator to be tempo and the loop indicator to be the pi. See, here's what it looks like when it's the beat. The beat's kind of cool. See how it flashes and then it shows you, it shows you like, you know, that's uh, one, one, two, one, two, three, Four, one, two, three, four, because it's, it's set to four, four. So it's showing you that that's the downbeat, the red. And so it's going two, three, four, downbeat, two, three, four, right? Which is cool. I mean, if that's what, if you need that, but you're already getting that from the, the flashing light. So put it to loop and then you get the pie chart. And then you can see how, so it, it's not making sense right now because it's a short loop. Right, but if it's a long loop, here let me clear all. I'll set up a you know a quick drum beat. But if I record a long loop like this, right? It's recording a long loop. It's recording. It's recording. It's recording. I'm not even doing putting anything in there. But now it's going to have a nice long pie. See now you can see where you are in the loop as it goes around, which is very important. Unfortunately, when there's no way to tell it when you stop to continue. It should continue showing you in yellow or blue or something. That would be, that would have been smart if they had asked me. <laughs> because, and it, I'm, a lot of people have, have made, this, made this point is that you wanna know where you are in the loop even when it stops so that you can bring the loop back in. Do you see how the loop's there? And it's going around, I'm gonna stop it. It's probably about here, it's probably about here. Eh, there it is, yeah, it's there. But I wanna know that. I wanna know, I wanna be able to visually see where it is. Um, and it's same thing even with this. So look, it's when you stop it, it doesn't show you on the screen. It doesn't show you what that loop's doing. You have no visual representation. They bring it back in, boom, then you can see the pie chart. They should have left, 
they should have had it so that this turned yellow or something. It changed color just to show you like, oh, you're you're not playing the loop, but it's it is still it's still see watch it continues. It's going it's probably here, it's probably there, it's probably there. Oh, there it is. Yep. It's going around. Okay, there it is. Stop. Okay, so I'm guessing it's here. I'm guessing it's here. I'm guessing it's here. Boop. Yeah, it's there. But you can't see that when it's stopped. It just goes white. Because white means stop, right? Stop. Blue means there's nothing on there. So when I hit all clear, boom, they all go blue. Anyway, so Boss did an amazing job on this thing. Amazing job. It is really, really great. It just has a few things. They could have easily picked up the phone and called me. And I would have explained them how to do it. But they didn't. So we'll have to wait for firmware updates. Okay, this upper row. Here's, here's some, this is what I mean about this upper row being important. And I'm just doing this just as to make a point of it. When you, first thing you do when you get the Boss RC600 is you should cover these words with tape <laughs> because they mean nothing. These words, these words, I mean, I'm going to use these as record, play, and stop. And I'm going to use them as the way that they ship because I like having the three tracks on the bottom. Um, these words mean nothing. Input effects, A, B, track effects, A, B, C. This stuff I'm going to assign to MIDI controllers and all sorts of other stuff because... The, the customizability of this thing is what's important. This is the most amazing looper of all time. But what they, the way it ships is, is basically for you to test it out. They ship it with this being the all start stop button. You're gonna assign these three to the most important things to you. And these three lights are gonna give you cues on what you need to know in the assign fun, in the um, controller, not in assign, you go to, Whoops, wrong one. You go to control. To, to assign those, you go to control. So you go to mode one. So this is pedal one, two, three, four, five, six. These are seven, eight, nine. So you go to seven. Here's seven. Track seven I have as track right now, just for right now, I have it as track one, undo, redo. So here's track one. Here's an overdub. And now when I click it, it's red. That means it's undone. Green, it's redone. Undo, redo, undo, redo. I'm getting the light visual right so whatever it's said underneath here i'm just gonna rip this up to <laughs> as a point oh track select hell no i'm not using track select i'm using it as undo redo it's whatever is most important to you is what you should be using this controller function so pedal seven which is this one right here seven eight nine seven eight nine this is the most important zone so you sign them the way you want so here's an example i've got all three tracks track one two three there's you know there's overdubs on all three tracks all three tracks are going so i set this row to all be track one undo track two undo track three undo so you track three undo track two undo track one undo and you get the red cues that means they're undone redone 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 so as you can see so i'm gonna clear everything do it again some recording 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 all three tracks all three tracks have something on them, but now they only have one loop. So if you do it, it just deletes it. It sends it back to the blue state, right? So as soon as you record something, it gets you the green back. Boom, you have it in there. You have track three playing. That means it's it has something in it. Now it's overdid, overdone. And I click this, and that means it's undone, red. So these are the visual cues that you get up here. Like I said, the words that were here, they don't matter. All right, so that concludes this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm gonna to do tons of um, in-depth analysis of this thing and little tips and tricks to figure out the best way to set it up. So see you on the next one.